Hello, my friends. How are we doing? Let's take a look here at a, another line follow program. This one here, as you've seen just prior to this in this video, is going to be writing a code that is going to be able to use two color sensors. So you might want to create a robot that has two color sensors that could be used for a variety of task missions and or you could use this in a way in which both motors or both color sensors are being used to correct the movement of the robot. So it's just another way to build your robot, put in some additional strategy, and then obviously learning some new coding as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this when um, program starts here for now. But one of the things we're going to do, this is a huge asset to your coding Especially when you, if you're doing first leg league and you start to have several missions up and running, um, or you have some challenges in your class that require a multi-step task for the robot to complete, and that's down here in this red area called My Blocks. What My Blocks allow you to do is to create your own programming block with the code in there. And so, as opposed to doing something and, and adding 20 blocks every time you want to do something, maybe several times, and I, you know you know, well-developed programming uh, mission or challenge, you can write a my block and then you can just drag one block at a time. So what I mean by that is we're going to go here to make a block. I'm going to call this just LF for line follow. You can call it whatever you would like. Uh, so we would use this a lot in our first Lego League, especially in lab view. Um, it's a little bit different now um, where we would create our own my blocks and then be able to reuse a section of code over and over again. And here you're going to be able to do the same thing. So you see what happens when I created that my block called it line follow. I get a now a new block over here called LF, and we'll use that here in just a second. But I also get over here on my control canvas or my coding canvas this define line follow. So what that means is now I have to define what is LF. And so let's go ahead and write some code here for that. And we're going to keep it pretty straightforward on this one, and you'll see how it works. I'm just going to add a forever loop for the sake of this program. And in there, we're going to add um, several if else blocks. So we're going to go here to this if else block. And I'm going to put that in this forever loop. And then I'm actually going to add another one of these under the else statement. Because what we need to do here is we need to write a program for our color sensor on the left and then write a program for our color sensor on the right so they can both be used within this line follow block. So for this one, we need to define our if statement, if what. So we know we're using color sensors, so I'm going to go to my sensor panel, and I'm going to go to this uh, reflected light intensity, and you see the shape just like scratch. I need to find the sensor block that's just like that. I'm going to drag this in. Now remember it's defaulted at 50 because we know that reflected light of black theoretically is zero. White would be 100. If you've seen my previous videos, you know my space is pretty dark. So I'm actually going to do seven. And remember the way we do that is you can put your color sensor right on the edge of the black and white line and in port view, gather that number. And I would check several spots depending if your lighting is a little bit different on your cores. So your number probably most likely, especially if you're in a classroom or a well-lit space, is going to probably sit between 30 and 40 on average, but you're just going to have to make adjustments like I've had to do here. And what we're going to do now, if for motor or port 3 of our color sensor, reflected light intensity is less than 7%, then what do we want to do? We want to have our robot calibrate and move um, so it stays on the line. It keeps making that reading. So I'm going to find a start moving block. We're going to use something that we haven't used yet here um, in this program or any of the previous programs. We're going to start doing this and we're going to use this start moving at and we see we've got two numbers in here. Now these are our two motors for our robot. And what I'm going to do is just change these. I'm going to make this 15 um, and 30% speed. 
So if one wheel is spinning faster, if you think back to lesson one, we're going to have a turn. It's not going to be a pivot, a sharp turn, but it's going to be this gradual turn of, of moving back into a direction. And once it starts moving out of this if block, all right, then it's going to kick back up in this loop and it's going to read again. And if this sensor is still reading less than seven, it's going to continue that turn. All right. And once it, this reading gets above 7%, then it's going to drop down to this else area of this coding platform right here, this else statement. And now it's going to start to make these decisions. So actually what we can do here is just use this same exact sensor block. So I'm just going to duplicate that, drop that in here. And I know that I want my other sensor. I've got my other color sensor in port four. You can have it plugged in wherever um, and you can have that as well. And that's all going to stay the same here to make just yet another decision. What we're going to do though is we're going to use this block again. But it, this is our other color sensor. So we actually want it to move the opposite direction, right? So if this sensor sees it's less than seven, it's, it's going to veer one way. If it's sensing it with this other color sensor, we want it to go the opposite. So we're going to flip flop these numbers here. So turning to the left up here, turning to the right in the next one. And the last thing we want to do is duplicate this one more time because what if we go through this loop, color sensor in port three is higher than 7%, drops down here, and if color sensor in port four is higher than 7%, then what do we want to do? In this case, or less than, less than seven, less than seven. So if color sensor three and color sensor four are both reading below the threshold of seven, that means we're on black. And what would we like that to do? Our goal here is to create a more smooth, fluid program. And so we can go through and make both motors the same. So it just drives straight until one of these gets recalibrated because it's sensing white or a brighter light intensity here above 7% of our threshold. So we're going to keep that at a constant speed. So all of this is a line follow code. And like I said, if you're creating a, a first Lego League program or you have a maze or a challenge in your classroom, and kids aren't going to want to re-add this over and over and over again. One, it takes a lot of extra time. That's not needed. Two, your canvas will become very busy rather quickly in this platform. So this is why we do this my block. Because now check this out. I'm actually going to um, get rid of this when this program starts. Because I like to have my program start at the press of a button. So I'm going to bring that, just like we've done in previous videos, so when my up button is pressed, the actual code that I'm operating then, I'm going to my my blocks, is line follow. So you can see this becomes very nice. So once I start my robot, it's going to do the line follow. And actually what that's going to do, it's going to go here and it's going to read this definition. So then I can add other things to go on underneath it. So my main code is actually here just one block, which isn't too bad. What I'm going to do here also, I'm going to duplicate this. All right, and I'm just going to drop this down. I'm going to press the center button. I just want to have a code that kicks out. So I can make this another my block if I, if I wanted to. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to stop moving. And I'm going to go here to control. And I'm just going to stop and exit the program. I'm just actually just going to stop all stacks. So what this will do is it will stop all the stacks that I have programmed. But I'll stay in the program. Um, so I could actually run it again if I wanted to. This one here would kick it completely out of the program, so you'd have to go through your button presses to activate the program again. So I've got these here just to control my robot a little bit better. The last thing that I want to do um, is just a little thing that I, I like to use. Some people use sound. I like to use display. So this works really well when trying to troubleshoot code because you can use color to see where in your program things are going wrong or how it's working. So I'm going to go here to this under display, the set status light two, And I'm just curious because I want to be able to see how these sensors are being activated, if at all. So if this color sensor here in this if loop is being activated and used, my brick is going to light up red. 
And then I can do the same thing down here where I could go to this one. If this sensor is reading below seven, I want to make that orange. And I'll just do one more right here and we'll make this green. So if this one's being activated, I can see that as well. This way, when my robot's running, I can look for these colors to see what's being used, what's not being used. And this is really good for troubleshooting um, to make sure your code is right. So if you have some faulty code and I, I'm thinking, man, this orange should be lighting up and it never lights up. I know that I've got something wrong that I need to go back and look. So this is the line follow program using two color sensors. So let's flip over to the robot and see how this code uh, plays out for us. All right, so I've got my robot here. I'm gonna go ahead and boot up my code. I've downloaded it and we should be in great shape here. All right, so um, you can see I've added a little bit of tape to my arena. One of the things that I did not take into account was how sharp what this particular turn was here. And not only was it a sharp turn, it also went back in. Um, so that was a, a little bit of a challenge. But you can see here um, how this robot works. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this. And you can see how the lights are lighting up here. And now our robot's pretty smooth as it works around this arena here. You see there's a green, there's some red and orange there. So I can see that both sensors are being used and activated. So it's just constantly allowing us to make several decisions. And so you can see here, once they both see that black and that threshold, nice and straight, which is super nice. And this is really just makes more for effective coding and uh, programming as we go through that. So as you think about that, thinking about the application and how this could be used, I would love to hear from you. I'd love for you to try this out. You can adjust the speed, the amount of the turn. You can make it more, more striking of a turn if you want to. You can go faster. Obviously, you're going to have to play into those variables a little bit to make sure that the robot doesn't get uh, too far off course. But this is an excellent strategy that can be used to your advantage for a lot of different reasons and ways. We've used the two color sensor one, obviously, for line following. Uh, but we've also can program it where one sensor is looking for a specific color and then one of our attackers does a, a, a mission and we use it where let's say that the other color sensor is looking for another color and then another mission will happen. So you can kind of go out and, and, and one mission deploy and have several things happening at once once you start to learn how to code and use the sensors to make several decisions in one run versus always coming back to base time and time again. All right, my friends, let me know what you think, what questions you have, and if you make this work and you try it out and it works for you, I would love to see it, and uh, we'll rock and roll from there. All right, my friends, as always, stay awesome. Peace.